So today we're going to look at a transverse flux motor. Uh, we can see here in the patent there's a rotor in the center which is surrounded by magnets. So we have north and south magnetic fields uh, attached to the rotor. There is a coil that runs through the center which induces the field or flux density through the stator. So the ferrous material uh, increases the flux density and we alternate the current through the coil to produce the flux at the, in the right direction uh, to put the current vector 90 degrees to the magnetic vector so that we can rotate the motor. So in this case, we're just going to look at the halls for commutation. And uh, we could use halls and encoder or absolute encoder. Um, the halls are for commutation. And uh, Copley can do estimated sinusoidal after we get up to speed. So I found this really good paper, uh, design of a novel transverse flux machine. And uh, we can see in this paper by uh, from Bosch uh, that this was actually W.M. Morty who had a patent for this kind of design in 1895. Um, the reason it's not used widely today is because it's difficult to manufacture. Um, again, we can see the basic concept of the rotor with the permanent magnets, the coil through the center, and the stator ferrous material. Um, this is uh, uh, showing the design of an old stepper. It's much larger with the coils. Um, that's a stepping motor. And this is actually a brushless DC motor. Uh, again, the, uh, the shaft of the motor has the magnets and the coil goes through the center and the stator elements increase the flux density uh, to oppose the magnets. Um, here's a, uh, like the, the carrier uh, for the coil and for the, for the flux density. We can see motor stacks, uh, stacks of coils to increase the, the torque. And so um, here's the description of the flux density through the ferrous material. Um, this motor is a unique four wire. It's more like a stepper in, in, from, from what I see here. Um, the motor I'm going to look at today is actually a, a servo motor. But just to get the basic idea, uh, there's a lot of uh, math and uh, good references here. Um, and an example of a uh, microprocessor controlling a motor with some incremental uh, position feedback. We're going to use Halls today. So getting started with CME2 connecting to a motor, um, we would use the basic setup to pick a brushless rotary and Halls. If we had an encoder, we could say encoder or absolute feedback device. Um, I'm going to do this in a position mode, but we could do torque or even a velocity control. Velocity is very popular for basic uh, spinning of some blades, perhaps, uh, propeller maybe. Um, but in position mode, we can really hold a tight uh, position over time or a tight velocity. Um, so this will give us the stiffest regulation at speed. Um, but again, velocity mode for just your basic type of. Uh, propeller type application, or even for position control. Um, we're just going to do software programmed, and we're going to use estimated sinusoidal and the halls for the velocity control. So we'll take a look at tuning for a very large inertia with a very large direct drive motor. Um, so this is an electric torque machine motor. It has a large inertia, 96 poles, direct drive, 30 amps peak, perhaps 35 continuous. We'll take a look at that spec later. Uh, torque constant and a back EMF constant. You can see it really, to go 1,000 RPM, you'd need a very high voltage. Uh, this is a direct drive application, so we don't really need to go all that fast. Actually, slower speed and high torque is more important uh, for direct drive. So we're setting the max speed limit to a theoretical 600 RPM given 230 volts AC rectified with a Zenus. 
the initial parameters are set. The, the motor can actually do uh, 7.5 amps uh, continuous 15 peak, and the peak could be a very long time. So a larger drive could be used, but I'm just checking it out with a little Zenus here. Um, so the basic uh, commutation is done with the, with the phasing. I had to invert some halls in order to get um, in order to get uh, decoding without all halls high or all halls low. Um, you can see there's an illegal state. <laughs> if uh, this is an indication of not 60 or 120 degree halls, but like 360 or 270. Uh, but this is this is better for safety because if you remove the wiring, uh, in this case, you will always have a hall state. If you remove the cabling, the hall state will go away. But uh, the idea is that the red indicator uh, should be balanced whether you go forward or reverse with respect to the black needle. Uh, if it's not, you can adjust the hall offset to affect the, uh, the lead and lag uh, of, of the phase. So the phase commutation is all set, and I should be able to do some current loop tuning here. So I've got the current set auto setup checkbox, hit start, and of course we can affect the gains. Um, too much overshoot, too ringy. And so I just gave it kind of critically damped tuning. It's it, 96 poles is a lot of electrical cycles per rev, but uh, this application doesn't need to go very fast, maybe 60 RPM. So again, we can um, check out the velocity loop tuning, um, and we can see that its, uh, it's stiffness is rather sluggish because of the inertia. Um, maybe a slower waveform would be more appropriate uh, for tuning sort of a back and forth action we can set the x cell and d cell rates and this uh, eventually gets up to what we're commanding here so it's still a little ag aggressive uh, but the velocity loop tuning i don't like the uh the overshoot so for halls only um i'm going to set the integral to zero this is well behaved with no overshooting um, if the gain's too low, of course, it's, you don't get any motion out of it. Um, we could uh, affect the gain shift here to uh, get a wider range out of the gains, but I'm going to leave that as uh, pretty good getting up to speed tuning because I'm going to use the position mode to get to uh, a good trapezoidal uh, move to make my profile hit my my target speed um, so a little repeat and reverse we're gonna look at the current actual here I'm gonna monitor the uh, voltage bus voltage uh, I'm gonna watch for uh, over voltage shutdown and voltage terminal servo so I'm not going very fast and we're still gonna develop some some voltage here And so that's just a move forward and a move back. We'll see the profile generator. And uh, I've got the gains for the position loop down a little bit. But we can see the, um, the profile velocity, accelerate run, decelerate stop. Um, we could monitor the actual velocity. So let's take a look at that. So we can see the profile accelerates, decelerates and stops. Uh, the actual velocity is shifted over, a little overshoot, gets to steady state. Um, the following air increases a bit while we accelerate, levels out. Um, we could, again, there's no integral, so we got a little steady state error, that's fine. Uh, feed forward term brings the air down. We could goose that up. If we needed to but look there's uh, already 25 volts for 60 rpm so uh, back emf on this motor is very high 
Uh, we can see the actual current to accelerate this inertia is only a couple amps. Uh, the viscous at 60 RPM gives us a little bit. Maybe that's friction. And then when we get to steady state, plus or minus a couple of counts for halls, um, this is about a quarter rev. So the hall counts per rev on the feedback is 576 counts per rev. So an encoder would do much better, but we're just winging it with just, uh, just halls here today. Um, I did move the filter in single pole 50 hertz because my inertia is huge. There's no unnecessary bandwidth there. And uh, we'll take a quick peek at this estimated velocity. So we can see as the speed of the motor gets up to about 20 RPM, on the way to 20 RPM, we can see the step nature of the Hall transitions. So trapezoidal commutation, but at about 20 RPM, uh, the estimated sinusoidal kicks in and it's very smooth. So trap commutation below 20 RPM, estimated sinusoidal above 200. Now with a large inertia, we may be able to do something to decrease the amount of um, uh, trap commutation at lower speeds. So that's that's a firmware thing we're working on. And uh, lastly, I want to show you uh, something about this motor here. Uh, so there's there's the old design of the motor, and here's the new one. So much less uh, mass. Um, the motor that I'm looking at. Uh, to buy is the M165, 38 newton meters of continuous force, rated for 700 RPM because it has a huge volts per k RPM. The uh, continuous current, 14 amps RMS, um, 20, 24 amps peak, so that's a, a good size drive. Normal inductance, low resistance, so very efficient motor. Um, the speed torque curve I'm working on today for this motor can do 70 newton meters of torque continuously as a direct drive. And you can see as you know the speed goes up, you get a voltage limiting. And so there's some, some limits on how much speed you can do. Okay, well, thanks for learning about the uh, transverse flux motor. And uh, talk to you later.